love it. You know, I grew up uh, in a generation where we used typewriters, like the real typewriters. The newly born kids, you know, six months old, they already know how to use an iPad. Um, so this whole world of technology, IT, um, is, is, is brilliant, I think, because it connects us in a way that we haven't been connected before, and especially as Armenians, you know, dispersed throughout the world. And in Armenia, I see the young generation are just so in tuned. You know, they all have their iPhones, or I don't see Blackberries too much, but they all have their iPhones and their iPads. Um, has it radically changed your world as well? Yeah, sure, because 26 hours per day, I'm 26? In. <laughs> oh, you go by a different clock. 20, 30 years ago when I used to come home from university, okay, I'm old, okay, so from university or from work, my work day would end when I came home. But now it, it's extended because now we're, we have the internet and we're continually working, we're using our, yeah. our smartphones and our computers, and it seems that our cycle, instead of making our lives easier... Yeah. You know, it depends on work. Uh, I remember that Karl Marx told that the real intelligent man working 24 hours per day. Well, you uh, must be brilliant. You work 26 hours a day. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, Mark, Karl Marx plus two. Plus two. <laughs> no, but uh, really it depends on work. If we, uh, uh, a lot of people also now are working even less at work because they are on Facebook, uh, so they are working not eight hours per day but four hours yeah, <laughs> i guess that's true i guess that yeah be before i mean there was no the, the way to disconnect from your busy work schedule was to go out and get a breath of fresh air yeah. uh now everybody's on facebook or twitter yeah and it's really hard to say uh, there are a lot of statistics how many hours people are uh, using internet per day i think a lot of people even cannot told how many hours because usually uh, the so we can talk and parallel I can yeah, yeah, uh, no, tweet yeah, and yeah. Uh, <laughs> Facebook and I cannot count how many sure. hours I think I think the only time all that day. I'm not <laughs> on all the time is when I'm actually sleeping because every every other waking moment we're doing something we're, we're dealing with something on uh, with uh, you can tweet also you can uh, sh schedule your tweets oh, there are a lot of <laughs> okay. programs and you can tweet <laughs> while I'm sleeping <laughs> while you are sleeping <laughs> well so you're an IT security specialist but not only uh, you, you're looking at me funny is that not the right way to explain it uh, you know uh, uh, that's a funny part of my uh, so how I'm introducing myself or putting something on my uh, business card because uh, before I was a journalist and then uh, before I was in human rights and before it was very strange, chaotic times, I even was a director of bookstore of, I think it was a uh, very strange bookstore in a garage, etc. Okay. Uh, Maybe we'll come back and do another segment about that <laughs> story. <laughs> okay. uh, um, so, when I started to uh, my work in Noravang Foundation, so we started to work on everything, every danger which are coming from information. So it doesn't matter, it's IT or uh, media, propaganda, etc. And we thought how to call it, and we decided to call it information security. Okay. Now, usually uh, in other countries, when you are starting to speak about information security, that's clear that real pure uh, protection of networks and servers, etc. In Armenia, because of some also political and uh, conflict with Azerbaijan and Turkey, etc. So now we have, for example, paper, governmental paper, information security concept. Okay. Uh, at the end, it includes uh, a lot of things, so propaganda and IT, etc. So I am working somewhere between this mm -hmm. propaganda and IT. I'm not pure IT security. I'm more analytical. Analyst. Right, I understand. I understand. But besides that, you, you, you lecture at two different universities, the Yerevan State University and Brusov mm -hmm. uh, Linguistics University. 
journalism, PR, mm -hmm. uh, courses like that. You're part of the Awesome Foundation, which is really awesome. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, I know that you've been invited many, many times to, to CivilNet to talk about uh, different issues. Um, how do you see... What I really want to talk about today is how social media has impacted mm -hmm. our lives, and especially because we live in a country that's, you know, fundamentally, you know, for the last 22 years of independence, we're still in this transition going towards something that I think collectively as a nation we haven't really determined yet where it is we want to end up. We have issues with our neighbors, we have domestic issues. Um, do you see social and and the rise of activism, huh? In the last year and two, mm -hmm. I mean, there's always been waves, but in the last year we've seen more, and we've seen kids using Facebook like never before yeah. to mobilize. Has does can it play a role, or is it just as we say in Armenian putsch? Is it just a, you know like a hot air balloon? Uh, it played already the role. Civil net, I think, the part of this new media world. I don't want to divide uh, social media and media and alternative media. I think now we are uh, in the time when we have just the media with uh, some different types of media, yeah? Uh, because it's really hard to say now or about is it a newspaper or a TV because they have a TV broadcasting also. Um, <coughs> so we are living in the times of media, just multimedia, uh, perhaps, yeah. multimedia, um, hip hypermedia, hypermedia. Right? <laughs> Let's say, yeah? because <laughs> multimedia is also the last century. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hypermedia. Uh, even I can be a TV. Yeah, I can use my mobile and make a live live stream. Etc. Uh, and it's really changed uh, everything because, from one point of view, uh, social media became a ground for a new type of um, civil society. Because before, uh, let's talk, uh, um, let's call it Facebook time. Well, before 2010, let's say, uh, civil society in Armenia it was pure. Uh, NGO uh, sector, uh, which uh, was very far from uh, real problems of the people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, now we have situation when uh, people are gathering around the problems without any donation, without any grants, foundations, etc. Uh, it really changed the face of Armenian uh, civil society, even political parties, which always was very far from real problems. Uh, uh, for Armenian parties, always the main problem was the power and nothing else. Yeah. Now they are obliged to go to uh, the problems, to pension reforms, etc. Uh, and uh, they have to do it. They have to deal with it because yeah. it's part of it's part of everything that we do today. At the same time, while I understand that social media serves as a really fantastic vehicle to start mobilizing, to yeah. start spreading information, raising awareness, or to stop mobilizing also. <laughs> also, because you know, I, I I love the term keyboard warrior. Yeah. Uh, you know, Samuel, you can sit here in front of your computer all day long and write statuses and get into arguments and uh, and, and then really do nothing. Yeah, but uh, I can uh, write a book after uh, 50 years, my participation in Egypt revolution. Right. Yeah, and <laughs> Sitting I can in Yerevan, for example. All my retweets and tweets <laughs> how, yeah, with a Tahrir hashtag. <laughs> Uh, but uh, it's, really, it's a like lot of people. It's like this pretend existence at the same time. So how do we, how do we make that definition? How do we, how do we separate that and then really use it as a tool? Because, look, uh, there are so many social and economic problems, political problems that we have to confront. And as media, who you know, for our part, when we try to, to share information for for civil society, how do you get? You know, uh, new media from uh, one side it's a good tool of mobilization, etc., etc. From opposite side, it's a good, the best surveillance tool for every government. Sure, yeah, all of our information is available to them. Yeah, people like exhibitionists putting everything there uh, and 
30, uh, 40 years ago, KGB put an <coughs> incredible effort to find the information for about one person. Now this person putting everything uh, on a platter for them, yeah, yeah. for free, openly. Uh, you can see uh, his relations, connections, where have he's been around the day. If you are checking Foursquare, you can see where he's yeah. checking in. Um, so. Uh, it's a very strange situation and the main problem is that we have no tradition sure. uh, with, a ne with a network. For example, funerals, we have a tradition how to deal with a hmm. grave, etc. It's coming from old times. It's rituals, changing, of course, traditions, but, but we don't know how to deal with it if either uh, or marriage or uh, everything. If uh, someone is uh, facing the first time something like that, he can ask his friends uh, or grandmother. For advice on how uh, to do they, it. Uh, you know, the better to do it. Since with the internet, it's the first time when all human race have no any traditions. And uh, another point that smallers are more clever on this field than the, old, the elders. The younger ones the are younger, yeah, yeah. yeah sure. um, you know uh, you also ro uh, report about um, you know there's cyber hacking as well yeah. um, and you report about Azerbaijanis hacking Armenian sites Armenians hacking Azerbaijani mm -hmm. sites um, is it a form of is it a, like we say in Armenian Aktia is it a form of protest is it yeah. is it in response to something? Yeah. The, what goes on here? I mean, I'm not talking about, you know, yeah. some 13 year old kid sitting in Omaha, Nebraska and, and hacking the D Defense Department's uh, website in the United States. Uh, what goes on politically here? I mean, mm -hmm. is, 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 that, is that the foundation of it? Uh, uh, the hacking community in Armenia is not, let's say, normal as in the US, for example, because for example, we have no political activism, we have no civic activism, we have no hackers which are working against uh, authorities, etc. All uh, efforts are going against Azerbaijan and Turkey. It's not domestic. It's not, it's not domestic. Usually because uh, in uh, Western countries you can find a lot of uh, left activists, anarchist hackers, anonymous, for example, yeah. Uh, Armenian anonymous working only against Azerbaijan and Turkey. <laughs> um, but it started uh, not so early. So uh, first attacks came from Azerbaijan. And they Turkey. started. Yeah, they started, and it. Uh, was I think five or six years uh, it was only one side attacks. Mm. I mean there was nobody responding there were no Armenian hackers responding to them? Uh, the question is to whom respond because one uh, anonymous hack hacker hacking Armenian uh, kindergarten website. <laughs> okay. The response can be one another anonymous Armenian hacker hacking uh, school in Baku. Right. So it's not uh, pure response. It's just like when tit for tat, and it's like you know, yeah. uh, you throw a stone on the. So usually back. Armenians not so aggressive and active, but because uh, Azir is working and working every day again, even their hacking community. Mm, bind in one group, they call it anti-Armenia. So Really? Yeah. Wow. This is the biggest uh, Azeri hacking group. And they uh, have only one aim, yeah? yeah? Only make bad things to Armenia and Armenians. And they usually occur around specific dates. If I'm, yeah. if I'm mistaken, tell me, April 24th, when we commemorate the genocide, Independence Day, um, Sumgait, I'm assuming, Hojalo is coming Sumgait. up. So that's going to, there's going to be a lot of activity then, you, yeah. you think? Sure, uh, anti-Armenia already put uh, on their website banner so Hojali uh, 26 mm -hmm. uh, so you can expect uh, <laughs> a lot attack. of activity yeah uh, but because of their activities 
they somehow awaken Armenian uh, hacking activities. Yeah. And now, uh, on this year, um, established, I think, five or six new Armenian hacking groups, and they all started uh, hack. Uh, and it's mostly directed at Azerbaijan, but also Turkey? Uh, not so much Turkey, uh, but because Turkish hackers also now are not so active. Uh, three, four years ago, they were very active against Armenia, but now I think they have uh, Syria and others. It's uh, incredible, so isn't they it? forgot about Armenia. So they've become tools, weapons, almost in a in in, in a new age, new media, new sure. technology. Can be a weapon. At the moment, it's like more um, tactical games uh, because it will become a weapon if the real war possibly will start. In this case, these attacks will have a mean not only just the propaganda, etc., but uh, hackers will close media websites of enemy etc so mm -hmm. at critical will, times perhaps yeah, yeah since it's, it's incredible just one final question <clears throat> I, I had taken part in a uh, in a seminar in um, prague mm -hmm. about uh, information technology and the use of social media um, we spoke a little bit about hacking and where attacks are coming from and following f and understanding who your followers are. Um, and in a lot of the European countries, for example, Twitter is very, very powerful. Like if they want to get a message across to a minister of education, for example, you know, they use Twitter. In Armenia, I, I've, I'm seeing now Twitter is becoming a little bit more, um, I don't want to say impactful, but people are using it more. But in Armenia or in the region, what are the sites that people are using mostly? Uh, in the region, uh, Facebook is the main tool. Uh, it's hard to say why, but uh, in Georgia and in Azerbaijan, it's the same uh, as here. Uh, not big communities uh, of English-speaking uh, speaking youth are uh, in the Twitter, but. Because you can't hashtag in Armenian, right? And, and not only because, uh, for example, Armenian language is, is not uh, working good with the Twitter. <laughs> because it's, it's very heavy. Uh, our words are too long for Twitter. 140 symbols is not enough for Armenian. We really can maybe say enough. three or four words. At the yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I think one of the best uh, uh, explanation why is it's not popular here and in the region. This and the second is that Armenians and Azeris and Georgians, they uh, want to go deep in conversations. Yeah, it's and not the fast, quick, yeah, sort of yeah. what we do in the English world, right? That's you why know? we more are uh, we are more um, active in, uh, in Facebook. Facebook. And you can find uh, in Facebook Minister of Education and ask him a question. <laughs> and he will answer, right? Yeah, yes, yeah, he does. Also, yeah. And he writes statuses <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Well, Samuel John, this was a real pleasure for me to meet uh, to meet with you and get That's a chance. Funny. And as I said, there are so many other aspects of you that we didn't get to, um, the different things that you do. But I happily follow you on Twitter, and <laughs> and I, I don't even think we're Facebook friends. So maybe to, after today we will be, and yeah, sure. uh, we'll write those you know crazy statuses. And maybe f you'll write a book on Egypt, and I'll write a book on <laughs> I don't know the Palestinian movement or something. Who knows? <laughs> so thank you okay. very much. Thank you.